To see an MRI of your head and see a black spot in your brain, yeah, that'll, that'll sort of reinforce, yes, I had a stroke. Seven years ago, a clot had formed in an artery in Rebecca Sherman's brain. Rebecca was so incapacitated that she was unable to walk or talk. Dr. Maria DeSancho pulled her through. Hi, Ms. Sherman. How are you? How are you doing? Hello. Hi, Thank Mr. You. Sherman. Good. Um, yeah, so... So, how is everything going on with you? Everything's going fine. The main risk factors, let's say, for a stroke include hypertension, smoking, diabetes, OK? So she didn't have any of those uh, risk factors. If you find that in a, in a young person, you really have to look to try to find why this happened. Rebecca's blood showed Dr. DeSancho that Rebecca has an autoimmune condition called antiphospholipid antibody syndrome or APS, a condition that can cause blood to clot more easily. A lot, right? And Rebecca had been taking estrogen-containing birth control pills, which can also make blood clot more easily. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and then there was that. I, then I was, and then I the was more that. kind of risk factors that you have, the more chances to have a blood clot. 33% of all strokes in people under 50 are due to APS. Some people have these antibodies and never had any problem in terms of clotting. We don't know right now who, and that's one of the interests that I have, who having these antibodies is going to end up having a blood clot down the road. We do not know. Hematologists do know that pregnancy increases the risks of clotting. Two weeks. I'm having a oh baby in two God. weeks. <laughs> Talk about terrifying okay. fear. Yes, I'm having a baby in two weeks, and I'm generally freaked out. Um, yeah, so, so we... Well, you sure than me. <laughs> like birth control pills, pregnancy also revs up the clotting system, a condition Rebecca controls with daily injections of blood thinners, medication that slows the process of blood clotting. Okay. Which one for him? That'll be the daddy chair. APS can also risk the health of the baby. This gets harder and harder each time to get up on the table. It's the cause of up to one in four early miscarriages. There's the baby's head, and the head is pressed up against the placenta. <laughs> what a sweet little squish. <laughs> wow. Well. OBGYN Dr. Robin Kalish has monitored the health of the baby throughout the pregnancy by monthly ultrasound. Okay. So here you can see the heart. You can see all the four chambers of the heart. Oh, my God. Look at it. Whenever someone has an increased risk of having a blood clot, we always worry about having a blood clot in the placenta. And so one way to tell that is looking at the size of the baby to make sure the baby's growing well. That means the baby got enough nutrients from the placenta. And the other is looking actually at the blood flow through the umbilical cord. So this is the umbilical cord. Look at the blood flowing through the umbilical cord. You hear the heartbeat? Yeah. That's unbelievable. And it looks um, very good that there was no compromise of the blood flow from the placenta to the baby. It's a very delicate balance, specifically at the time of delivery. Blood pressure then good. As the delivery date grows closer, the balance of concern shifts from the baby back to Rebecca. Because her blood thinners put her at risk of hemorrhaging during delivery, Rebecca will be taken off the very medication that has kept her from having another stroke. She's on these blood thinners. Mm -hmm. Is she at a higher risk of stroke? There is always a little bit of a risky right. period. It's because I always okay. think about there's the risk of bleeding um, and the risk of clotting. Yeah. It seems like it's one or the right. other. Right. Get, right. It's at, the, at the risk of getting way ahead of ourselves, and maybe you don't want to hear this one. Dear God. God forbid something happened. Right. And there was a clot. Mm -hmm. But there are things you can do. Yes, there that, are medications okay. that could be given if that was the case. I mean, I don't okay. think that's going to happen, but you know, of well, course, there are medications that could be used. It's nerve wracking to know that something could go wrong so easily. Rebecca's trepidation isn't just about being a first time mom. In danger of a stroke, Rebecca has been on blood thinners throughout her pregnancy. Hi. How, How are you doing? doing? But 24 hours ago, they were stopped to reduce her risk of bleeding during delivery. 
Now she is again at higher risk for developing a clot. And so far, I mean, you think that probably it's going to be a vaginal delivery. I mean, that's your... That, that's my, my thought. Right. But. And then postpartum, when when would you like to start the heparin back? Exactly. So it's very important. Anytime a patient has any sort of high-risk um, situations, that all the physicians who are involved in the care of that patient communicate well. Wait about six hours okay. after the epidural catheter is removed. Okay. And the aspirin. And the aspirin. Okay. So. okay. Right now, everything looks, uh, looks great, so... Okay. So. I'll see you later. How's it going, Daddy-o? Pretty good. <laughs> the issues of whether she could have a stroke during delivery or not, you can understand why it may not be that high a risk, but it doesn't mean the nervousness goes away, because there always is a risk, of course. But I'm still nervous about it. Rebecca's physicians have taken every precaution and have contingency plans should anything go wrong. How is everything going on? It's going Good? fine. Deanna Sherman is born without complications. You? Got her head? It's amazing. It's like so peaceful. It's like, a, I tell you, it's like a miracle, really. <laughs> so.